Our presenter today is Brad Smith. Brad is a director of SEO and social media at Haley Marketing, the nation's largest marketing firm dedicated to servicing the staffing and recruiting industry. Brad has over 10 years of experience in the staffing and recruiting industry, helping organizations develop and implement strategic marketing plans. As a certified inbound marketing specialist, Brad has helped over 150 staffing and recruiting companies with website development, search engine optimization, blogging, and social media marketing. Brad is a frequent contributor to Haley's Marketing's educational webinar series for the staffing industry and has presented for several staffing industry groups and associations and has been quoted in industry publications such as Staffing Success and Staffing Industry Review Magazine. Haley Marketing is a staffing industry marketing specialist dedicated to helping staffing and recruiting firms gain a competitive advantage in a saturated market. At Haley Marketing, great marketing is more affordable. Their services include website and social media strategies and design, email, direct mail, and more. Today's webinar session is designed to help you answer the following question. Is your staffing firm effectively using social media to drive sales, recruit talent, and fill more job orders? When used appropriately, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and other social sites can provide you with direct access to staffing decision makers while expanding your reach into a massive talent pool. Today, Brad will show you the science behind social media, how to generate leads, nurture relationships, and fill more orders. By the end of the session, you'll have learned where and when to post, what to post, and what to do next to employ the full power of social media for your staffing firm. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the Q&A feature or the chat feature. And after the presentation, there will be time for questions. Um, with that, I will turn the floor over to Brad. Thanks so much, Amanda. I really appreciate it. Uh, and, and thanks for the opportunity to speak at this great event. And thank you all for being patient with us as we dealt with some technical difficulties here, but I hope it's going to be worth your wait today. Uh, as Amanda mentioned, today's webinar is about social is a science. And uh, traditionally, when you think about marketing, oftentimes it was, it was about creative. It was about a pretty picture or a, an emotional uh, piece of, of text or emotional message. You couldn't really measure it. Uh, and that's why I like social and online marketing so much. You can measure online marketing. We have specific data that we can use. Uh, it's a science, and that's what today's webinar is going to be about. We're going to talk about how to use that data. So we're going to look at first what social media can do for your, your staffing firm. We'll look at what sites you should be using and help you define how to find out which sites you should be using. We'll talk a little bit about exactly what to share. And then finally, we'll wrap things up with how to make sure that you're making the right decisions. So what can social media do for my company? Um, you're on this call, I'm sure, because you see some value in social media. You understand what it can do for your company. Maybe you just don't know where to start. But as a quick overview, social media allows you to get in front of a huge network. It allows you to build a really strong, powerful talent network. And it also uh, can be used as a lead generation tool, so building a strong business network. It amplifies your reach of content, so you're reaching many more people than you would if you were doing one-to-one -one communication or knocking on doors or dialing for dollars. And finally, it can help with your customer service. It can help you identify if there's a problem in your service process or there's a problem on your internal team. So large talent network. We all know that social media has been growing by leaps and bounds over the last few years. It's amazing, though, to look at the statistics. Just three or four years ago, uh, Look at the number of people that were using social media. Back in 2010, we said, oh my goodness, 350 million people are on Facebook. That's amazing. Now, fast forward just a few years, and it's 1.3 billion people. It's amazing how powerful this network really is. In terms of your reach, your content amplification, there is no better tool to use to get your message in front of a wider audience than social media. People are consuming content there. Uh, 
And the great thing is social gives you the chance to reach, reach the quote-unquote masses. But I'm not just talking about masses in terms of just the general population. I'm talking about masses in terms of your target audience. And this kind of sounds counterintuitive, but uh, social lets you identify your key target audience. It lets you get in front of people that you normally wouldn't be able to reach, uh, but people that are your key target demographic. And the best thing about social media and content amplification is when your readers, when your followers consume content and engage with that content, they become an advocate for your services. So they become promoters for your services. So uh, in this example, in the screenshot here, you should see that uh, people have shared a piece of content 300 times, almost 300 times. Uh, so it is not only reaching your audience, but it's reaching all of those 300 people that, that shared it. It's reaching their audiences as well. So if you're connected with the right people, if you're connected with decision makers, if you're connected with uh, good quality candidates, if you're connected with other thought leaders or referral sources within your market, your content amplification is going to be amazing. So social is extremely, extremely powerful, not just in what you post, but how others engage with what you post. Social is an outstanding lead generation tool. As you can see on the screen here, a recent study by LinkedIn uh, looked at global recruiting trends. And this just wasn't in the staffing and recruiting industry. This was across all industries, across all companies. And what they found was, was really interesting. Uh, so back in 2011, the number one source of quality hires is in internet job boards. They're still strong. Uh, they still provide quality hires, so 38% in, in 2013. But what's really interesting is social prof professional networks have increased a lot. So we went from 20% uh, reporting that social was a source of good quality hires uh, just a few years ago to now 37%. And I bet if they redid the survey in 2014, social would pass internet job boards. So if your company isn't present on social, if you don't have a strong network, uh, you're behind the times. And you need to put a plan in place to build that network, solidify your place on the social landscape as a leader in recruiting, as a leader in staffing, as a leader in workforce management, because your clients are going there. Your clients are using these tools to recruit. And if you're not ahead of the game, if you're not a step ahead of them, uh, why would they consider using you? So make sure that you're um, one step ahead. Make sure that you've built that network and you can use that network as a differentiator for your firm. Social provides a great opportunity for customer service. And here are just a few ways that, that you can use social as a customer service tool. You could set up a recruiter helpline. Let's say um, uh, people out there are uh, looking to hire. Wouldn't it be great if they just uh, tweeted a job at you and you could easily fill that? Wouldn't it be great if they reached out and direct messaged you through, through Facebook or sent you a message through LinkedIn? So there's ways that you can make placing an order with you easier through social. Uh, in this particular example here on the right, uh, what this company has done is built uh, a strong employee network, uh, candidate network on Facebook. They've spent time and resources building their candidate network, and now they use it to their advantage. When they have a job that they need to fill right away, they put it up as a Facebook post. Within an hour of this post, they had hundreds of people that saw this ad, and they were able to fill the position right away. It can be very, very powerful. All right, so we talked uh, a little bit about what social can do. Uh, so before social can really have an impact for you, you need to find out where you need to spend your time. Uh, so depending on your audience, depending on the type of staffing that you do, the types of companies that you work with, um, what level of decision making you're trying to reach, all of those factors are going to go into choosing where you spend your time and where you invest your social resources. So how do you figure out where is what's going to be most beneficial? Should you spend your time on Facebook, or does it make sense to uh, tweet a lot? So should you be on Google Plus? You need to ask your audience. So how do you find out where your audience is? You ask. It's as simple as that. You ask. You, you could offer a short survey in applicant paperwork. Find out who has a Facebook account, a Twitter account, LinkedIn. Are they on Google Plus? You could use an email newsletter uh, again to ask people. Uh, where where they like you. Um, maybe in your email newsletter you have a you encourage people to follow you. That can be a great way to figure out what social network uh, they they use. Uh, 
Uh, they're going to follow you on their preferable social network. You can pull your Facebook page. You can uh, pull your LinkedIn group. One thing that I strongly encourage you to do is go through your LinkedIn connection list right now. Look for your best clients. Look for the companies that you want to work with. Look for hiring managers and hiring authorities in those companies and see what groups they follow. Get active in those groups and build your connections that way. It can be some great insight into uh, where and how you should spend your social time. All right, so once you figure out where your audience is, you need to figure out what to share. And what you share oftentimes depends on the network. So on LinkedIn, uh, most of the time, people that you connect with on LinkedIn, they're looking for business information. Okay? They don't want to know about uh, you know, your favorite sports team. They don't want to know about what your dog did uh, yesterday. They're, they're there for business, so post business-related content. On Facebook, a little bit different. You can show the personality of your brand. You can show people behind you. Uh, if there's in personal accomplishments, share those. If there's something fun and engaging that you've done in the office, share that. You can have a little bit of fun. You can do stuff that isn't 100% business. And in fact, the things that you post on Facebook that are fun and not business related oftentimes get the most engagement. And we're, we'll talk about tracking engagement and how you use all that data too here in a little bit. Um, Twitter. Twitter is more of a conversation. Uh, it helps you give your brand a voice. It helps you make one-to-one -one personal connections while allowing everybody else out there uh, to see those conversations as well. So I think in, in terms of, of Twitter being effective, you need, you need a plan to do that one-to-one -one communication. You need to figure out who the Twitter influencers are in your market. Connect with those people. How do you figure out who those people are? Well, well number one, those people have a lot of followers. And number two, those people are active. Okay, so look at, look at your audience, look who the influencers are, begin connecting with them, and begin striking up a conversation with them. All right, so we're going to dig into each one of these audiences, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. We're going to talk about specifically what to share. So on LinkedIn, we mentioned it's more about business. Okay, so what type of posts can you share that are more about business? Well, well first and foremost here on the list is salary data. Uh, I will say that some of the most popular content that we've shared, not only on, on LinkedIn, but, but across all channels, is salary data. Why is that so um, popular? Well, well, number one, salary data is good for candidates. They want to make sure they, they are being compensated what they should be. It's also great for employers. So hiring managers want to make sure that their job openings uh, and the salary that they're offering uh, is competitive with other co uh, companies in their market. Uh, they want to make sure that they're not overpaying people. Uh, so salary data is, is very uh, powerful. Where can you get the salary data? Well, well, hopefully you have it in your um, uh, staffing software. And maybe you can export this and export a history of open positions and, and data. Uh, another great source is Indeed. Uh, if, you, if you go to Indeed.com and scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a research area. And you can type in any type of position you want in any geographic region. It's going to spit back some great salary data. It makes for really compelling content. Not that many people know it's there. Uh, it's free. It's accessible. And I suggest taking a look. Other data um, or other information that, that's, that's powerful, hot jobs, white papers, case studies, presentations. When you're putting this information together, think about what your target audience's biggest challenges are. Uh, what's keeping them up at night? What is preventing them from achieving their career goals? Uh, what's preventing them from achieving uh, the, their objectives, um, the, the metrics that they're being measured on internally? If you can create content that helps solve those problems, that helps them look like the hero within their organization, that's really compelling content. It's content that they're going to want to engage with. It's content that they're going to want to share with their audience. And it's content that positions you as an expert in your field. It makes, uh, when, you, when you pick up the phone and do that cold call, it greatly increases the chances that they're going to pick up the phone and actually talk to you. All right, so uh, that, that's LinkedIn. What do we share on Facebook? As I mentioned earlier, Facebook is a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you can have some fun. As you can see in this picture here, they had an ugly sweater contest around the holidays. Uh, great, great picture, great engagement. Um, it helps tell a story. It helps showcase your brand. It helps showcase uh, the culture of your company. puts a face with the name. Uh, adds some personality. 
the nice thing about this is that it helps you build more of a personal relationship with your audience. And in, let's say you have a thousand people on your, your Facebook page. You probably don't have a personal relationship with all of them, uh, but just posting things like this can make that person feel part of part of the family, um, part of the company. So think about what you can do uh, to showcase your organization, to showcase the people within your organization and get their face in front of your target audience. It can go a long way in building trust, building rapport, and building a brand. On Twitter, we mentioned it's about a conversation. So what you're going to want to do is connect with your clients, connect with your candidates, look at the companies and the people you want to do business with. Strike up one-to-one -one conversation. Look at what questions they're posting out there. Okay, If you can be a, a source of answers, uh, that's going to position you as an expert not only with that one person, but everybody else that follows you and other people that follow that person. So it gets your name in front of more and more people. So answer questions, ask questions, uh, and you can even have a little bit of fun on Twitter too. If you see that your followers are a fan of a professional or college sports team and you want to strike up a conversation around that, go for it. Uh, that can be a great way to show that you're in tune and in touch with your audience. All right, so we talked a little bit about what platform to choose. We talked a little bit about what to share. Now we're going to get into the science of things. So how can you do a better job with social marketing? How can you use data? How can you use analytics to make better decisions? The nice thing here is that each social platform has uh, their own analytics uh, platform that gives you more and more data. So Facebook has Facebook Insights, Twitter has Twitter Analytics, and LinkedIn has LinkedIn Analytics. One thing that I haven't included on the list here uh, that I think is important to mention too is Google Analytics. Uh, so one of the benefits of social media is, is getting your message out to people on social outlets. But ideally, what we want to do is not keep them on Facebook, keep them on LinkedIn. We want to drive traffic back to your website. So I think it's important to look at all three of these. I also think, think it's important to look at Google Analytics to see if these are driving traffic back to your site. Uh, later in the presentation, I'll pull up a, a screenshot of some things to look at in analytics, but just keep that in mind, um, that we, we want to look not only at the social outlets, but look at our own uh, space that we own, our, our website, and, and see how social is impacting that. So we'll dig a little bit deeper into Facebook Insights uh, and, and talk about how we can improve marketing just by looking at this data. So if you're an admin of your company Facebook page, and hopefully you all are, um, if, if you're an admin, you can get some really great information. You can take a look at overall likes. You can look at reach, visits, posts. Uh, you can dig into uh, to people uh, and, and get a, a closer look at who your target audience is, what makes them tick. So let's start off with likes. Uh, what I suggest doing is reviewing your timeline. So log into Facebook. Go to your Facebook page. Click on Insights you're going to get an idea of how your likes have performed over time. And as you can see in this example, we've had a nice, consistent growth in links. That's what I want to see. I want to see consistent growth. I don't care if you start at 1,000 likes. I don't care if you start at one like. What I want to see is nice, consistent growth over time. Um, the other thing that I want, I want you to take a look at is growth trends. So have you seen a, a spike in growth? Have you seen a decline in, in growth of likes? I want you to look at all of those trends and then look at specific dates. See what was shared to produ produce that result. So look, uh, dig a little bit deeper. Look at your likes and unlikes. This will tell you if you're posting content that turns your audience off. If you post a piece of content and you get 10 or 15 uh, people that unlike your page, that's going to give you some really good information. It's going to tell you not to post something like that again. On the flip side, though, on the more positive side, if you post something that uh, gets a lot of engagement and a lot of likes, post more of that content. Look at that topic and, and see what really generated that interest and write more about those type of topics. The other thing that's, that's interesting here is you can look at other activities outside of social that are having an impact. And, and I'll give you a little um, example. We consistently send out email newsletters here at Haley Marketing. Uh, we do this for ourselves. It's an inbound lead generation tool It's a, to, to keep us top of mind and, and keep us aware. Um, whenever we send out a newsletter, we also post a little snippet about that newsletter on our Facebook page with a link back to that newsletter. 
When we do that, we get more engagement. We get more likes. So people are consuming our content uh, through the email newsletter, and they're also consuming it through social. So if you're doing other marketing activities, um, whether it's sending out a direct mail campaign, whether it's sending out an email newsletter, um, whether it's doing something else, incorporate that content into social as well. Don't just uh, leave that content offline. Look for ways to incorporate that. And you'll see a very cohesive marketing plan that touches people in several different, different mediums. Another thing that uh, you want to do is, is look at where your likes come from. And what I mean by that is, uh, did they come from an ad? Did they come from people using mobile devices? Did they come from your page? Did they come from search? Uh, and, and try to find out where your likes are coming from and then devote a little bit more time to the platforms that are driving more likes. Uh, the, the one note I want to point out here is mobile traffic is beginning to grow exponentially. Uh, last year, mobile traffic on average uh, to, to staffing and recruiting websites was about 10 to 15 percent. This year already, we're at about 15 to 20 percent. I bet uh, next year at this time will be 20 to 25, maybe even 20 to 30 percent mobile traffic. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, well, you need to make sure that your social presence is mobile friendly. And what does that mean? Mobile friendly means uh, putting maybe a little bit more emphasis on, on graphics a little less emphasis on text. Okay, so on a mobile device, text is a little harder to read. Uh, it's smaller. So maybe instead of uh, having text-based posts on Facebook, you have a graphic post on Facebook. Um, so think about these things when you're crafting your social strategy and think about the different ways people are consuming your content on the desktop, on their tablet, on their mobile device. Um, mix in bigger buttons, stronger calls to action. Make it easier to interact with your brand online. Another thing in Facebook Insights that I want you to take a look at is reach. Facebook has its own algorithm. It's called EdgeRank. And what they do is um, you may have 1,000 people that follow your page. At any given time, maybe you make a post and it goes to 100 or 200 of those people. Uh, so Facebook doesn't show your post to everybody that you like. It says uh, it has its own algorithm and says, I think that these people are going to enjoy this post. Um, so Again, you need to have good content to increase the likelihood that Facebook is going to show this to more and more people. Um, Facebook's algorithm is based on how people interact with your content. So it's based on likes. It's based on shares. It's based on comments. The more people that you can get to engage with your content, the bigger your reach is going to be. Um, so take a look at your reach and see what posts have uh, got the most reach. That means that people are engaging with it, they're viewing it more, Facebook is showing it more in people's feeds, and it, that means that you need to create more of that content. Uh, as you can see in the example here, a piece of content that had the most reach for us was simply a birthday cake. Um, and we posted a picture of a birthday cake on our Facebook page, and that got the most reach. It's not business-related information, but it helps get our name and message in front of other people. So. Uh, the, the moral of the story here is, is oftentimes the fun stuff, the stuff that you normally wouldn't think would, would get good engagement, good reach, oftentimes does. So test things out, uh, but look at data to see if your test worked, and then adjust your strategy going forward. The other thing that I want you to look at is overall visits. So look and see where people are coming from. So are external sources driving uh, traffic to your Facebook page? Uh, do you want them to drive traffic to your Facebook page? Uh, think about ways to include strong calls to actions uh, in other places that might drive more attention and focus to Facebook and help build, build your audience there, if that's a goal, uh, if Facebook is a valuable platform for you. So again, what this boils down to is just use the information that's there. Think about ways that you can use this information to make better decisions, hone in on your target audience, hone in on the right message, and have more impact. Great way to have more impact is uh, to make sure that you're posting at the right times. Um, Facebook has some great tools to help you find out when your audience is online. This is just an example, and, and this isn't meant to be a suggestion for your company or your page, uh, because every company's audience is different, every page audience is different, but this is just a sample of what we found. Um, the best day for us to post on Facebook uh, is Mondays. 
and it's Mondays right before lunchtime, um, near the end of the day, and then, strangely enough, 10 p.m. at night, when people are sitting on their couch flipping through their phone. So this gives us some insight into what the best days to post are. Now, this isn't the end-all, be-all here either. Uh, just because these are the times when people are online doesn't mean it, that they're necessarily going to engage with our content. So what I suggest doing is using this as a starting point. So look at what day of the week your audience is on Facebook, look at what day of time, and start posting around those times. Take a look at engagement, take a look at how um, far your, your post reached, and then test out a few different days to really hone in on, on what days and what times are best for your company and your audience. You can also take a look uh, specifically at posts, so you can see which posts got the most reach and the most engagement. Again, you'll find that the posts that get the most engagement oftentimes get the most reach. Uh, you can find out uh, if there's any similarities. So what we found is posts with pictures get a lot more engagement and a lot more reach than posts without them. Okay, so make sure that you have images uh, tied to posts. We often find that uh, uh, less text gets more engagement. So test all these things out and then look at look at these statistics to determine uh, what, what you want to do. Uh, one interesting uh, type of post that, that we found works for a lot of staffing and recruiting firms are recent placement photos or hot job videos. These don't have to be something that are expensive to produce either. You can record these on your iPhone and upload them right to, to YouTube. It's very powerful. Uh, the nice thing about the recent placement photos is, is, number one, it highlights your success without without bragging, and then it makes the candidate that you've placed feel special. It makes them want to share this content to their own audience. They just got a great job, and your staffing company helped them do it. It helps you reach a much wider audience, and it makes your existing candidate and candidate base feel really good about themselves. So there's big benefit there. All right, so that's Facebook. Um, some, some great tools, great data, great insights that you can use to make better decisions. Uh, now let's hop over to Twitter. Uh, Twitter has its own analytics platform, and you can see the link here. It's analytics.twitter.com. So sign in to that account using your company Twitter analytics page or your individual uh, Twitter account. What's this going to do? Um, the, the, the thing that I like about this is that if you're connected with the right audience, it's going to give you some great information that you can use not only on Twitter, but you can use in your offline marketing efforts too. What's nice about this is it's going to show you what your audience is interested in. Okay, it's going to show top interests, specific topics. It's going to show other uh, platforms, other companies, other accounts that your audience also likes. So this is going to give you really great insight into what you should be talking about. It can give you great insight into other articles that you could be sharing. So social isn't always about sharing your own content. It's also about sharing other people's content too. Uh, so in this case, our audience uh, for, for Haley Marketing Group likes the website Mashable.com. They like Wall Street Journal. They like Fast Company. So if I find a great article on one of those sites that I think is relevant for my audience, I'm going to share it because I know my audience appreciates content uh, from those sites. All right, that's Twitter. Um, so not as deep uh, of analytics as, as Facebook, but still some great information, again, that you can not only leverage on social, but leverage offline too. Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn also has its own analytics platform. You get to it by going to your page. You'll, if you're a page admin, you'll see a little edit button, and then you can uh, click on that to view page insights. What's this going to tell you? Well, it's going to tell you how people are interacting with your content. Uh, in, in, the, in the example here, uh, we showed some, some A-B testing. So what we suggest doing is, is using similar types of content, but just using different verbiage, using different images, uh, using different text, using different calls to action. See what works. Uh, in these two examples, we had similar reaches um, in terms of, of number of impressions, and we had a much higher uh, click-through rate and engagement rate on uh, one piece that had an image compared to two pieces that didn't. Uh, so again, images can be powerful. When at all possible, include an image uh, with your post. LinkedIn will also give you some great visitor demographics. And what's nice about this, uh, and unlike the other platforms, um, again, LinkedIn is, is more about business. So you can see employer size. 
So you can define who is coming to your company LinkedIn page in terms of employer size. Is it big companies? Are, is it small employers? Is it a medium-sized company? You can use this information to better craft content to that audience. Uh, if you find that large employers are coming to your site, maybe you talk about um, how staffing strategically can help eliminate overhead expenses, eliminate overtime, um, uh, limit risk, those type of things. If it's small employers, maybe you talk about how uh, staffing and recruiting services can help limit the risk of a bad hire. So think about your, your company size and, and who's coming to your page and craft your content around that. You can look at uh, seniority level. So are you getting CEOs to your page? Are you getting owners? Or are you getting um, HR associates? You can use that information to better craft your, your message. If you're getting um, uh, l lower level, entry level HR people, it's going to be a different message than if you're getting CEOs. So look at these demographics and determine who's coming to your page. You can also look at what industry they're in and, again, use this information to make better uh, content posting decisions. All right, so what have we learned so far? Just a real quick summary here. Uh, Facebook, we talked about the day and time your audience is online, what type of content your, your people like to consume. Twitter, uh, we talked about where your audience is from, what they're interested in. LinkedIn, we talked about a persona. So the typical person that comes to your page, what does it look like in terms of seniority? Where are they located? What industry are they in? Um, and, and what's their size? So now let's talk a little bit about uh, we, so we've talked about uh, what, what content to post. Now let's talk about ways to increase y your reach, increase your following. It's a question that I get all the time. How, social's great. I understand all of this, but how do I get more people to, to follow me? How do I get more people to engage? Um, so a few high-level uh, best practices. You want to share your social presence. So you want to make it easy for people to follow you online. Uh, you can share this via email. If you do a monthly email newsletter or any type of communication like that, make sure you include links in that. Uh, send out a notice to uh, your list separate from your uh, email newsletter that encourages people to follow you. Include strong social calls to actions in your emails. Make it, again, easy for people. Make big buttons. Don't make them work to try to connect with you on social outlets. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, before doing any of that, you need to figure out why in the world people would even want to follow you. You have to you have to have a compelling reason. It's not easy. It's it's not good enough to just say, "Hey, follow me." You need to think about why people would want to follow you. Why and and why would people want to follow you? Well, well, number one, they'd want to follow you if you're helping solve a problem. If you can solve a problem for people, they're going to want to connect with you. They're going to want to get your updates because they know you're going to provide value. Uh, so what I would do internally is sit down with your team and talk about what value you provide to the end client. Hopefully you've, you've done this already. You know what your values are. Um, so, so talk about reasons that somebody would, would want to f follow you. Um, think about what keeps your, your audience up at night, uh, what their biggest workplace challenges are and write content and post content around those challenges. And then once you begin doing that, uh, explain to people the value that they're going to get out of following you. Don't just say, follow me on Facebook. Um, say, follow me on Facebook for the following reasons, X, Y, and Z. Another way to build your audience, um, not just organically, so not just um, asking people for likes, and another way to do this is to actually buy them. And uh, it might sound a little strange at first, but uh, buying links is actually, um, it, it, one, it's, it's easy, and, and two, it's valuable. Um, so how can, you, how can you buy links through social media? Well, well, Facebook in particular, one great thing that you could do is um, export all of your client contacts out of your CRM platform. Okay, we need email addresses. Um, export uh, out of your ATS system. Again, we need email addresses. You can upload these um, to Facebook's ad platform, ad manager, and run targeted ads on Facebook. So everybody that uses that email address to log into Facebook, you can have ads show up for them, and it shows up in their news feed. You could take those ads to your Facebook page where they can like you. You could take them to your website. Uh, you could take them to a landing page. So it's really powerful. It helps you hone in on the exact person that you're trying to reach. Um, 
but again, you need to provide some value here. Uh, it's not enough to just say, hey, here I am, like me. You need to provide an incentive for somebody to like you, for somebody to click on that ad. So what value are you going to provide to them? A uh, few other ways to, to build your following. Um, follow others. So if you want others to follow and engage with you, do it first. Uh, look at your clients. See if they're active on social platforms. If they are, connect with them. Do the same thing with your candidates. Uh, your competitors. Uh, it's on this list not because I want you to follow your competitors. I want you to follow who follows your competitors. So take a look at the staffing firm down the street. and Look at their Twitter account. Look at their Facebook page. See who's following them. See who's engaging with them. And then begin building a relationship with those people. It's an interesting way to get your foot in the door and uh, make, make sure that if, let's say, they do have a relationship with them and it's not a great relationship, it gives you the opportunity to swoop in and, and be the hero and land that great account. So uh, explore your competitors' uh, social outlets, social networks, and uh, see what you can do to kind of pirate some of, uh, some of their clients and candidates. Look at other industry leaders, too. And what I mean by that is uh, look at other uh, companies in your in your market uh, that are that are leaders in the space. Look at who's following them. Look at who's engaging with them. Uh, look at um, industry groups. Look at local networking groups. Look at chambers of commerce. These can all be great sources of people that you should follow and engage with on social. These are people that you want to also follow you. I think um, one of the most powerful tools on social media or, or areas of social media is LinkedIn groups. As you can see in this example here, there are um, industry groups, there are local networking groups, um, there's local business associations. These are groups that already have your exact target audience. Okay? Many of these groups have thousands of people in them. It gives you a great entry point to get your name in front of your exact target audience. If you're not a member of groups and you're not active in groups, start now. Once you're a member of a group, you can connect with any other person in that group. Okay, so let's say you're in a specialized engineering field in a local market. There's probably already a LinkedIn group that exists of those people. It's a great candidate pool and it's a great lead generation pool. So get there, get active. Um, another thing that, and I mentioned this earlier, but you should look at your existing clients and uh, your best clients. See what groups they're members of and begin joining those groups. You'll often find that, that birds of a feather flock together, and it's, it's a great way to get your name in front of other key decision makers. All right, so we've talked about a lot so far. Now I, I get this question all the time, how do I... How do I know if this stuff is working? All right, I know that I have to do it. I know that I should be doing it. Uh, now I know what to post, hopefully. Um, how do I know if it's working? Uh, well, a as we talked a little, bit a little bit already, we need to check the stats. Each social platform has their own analytics platform. Hopefully you have something like Google Analytics installed on your website so that you can get this data. Um, so what do we want to look for? We want to make sure that we're getting bigger post reach. We want to make sure that we're getting more social referrals to our sites. We want to make sure that there's spikes in referral traffic when we post things online or send out an email newsletter. Um, we want that consistent follower growth. We want some consistent likes. Uh, so those are all metrics that I want you to take a look at. I also want you to get down into the nitty gritty. And what I mean by that is look at specific posts. And this is just an example of two very similar posts that were made one, for the same company so to the same audience. Um, one post had three likes and one person that shared it. We got in front of 211 people. Another post um, the week before, or a week or two before, had four likes, one share, and seven comments. Had almost 500 people that we reached, uh, so more than double the reach. Why was that? Well, it's because, I mentioned earlier, Facebook has an algorithm. So the more people that comment on a post, the more people are going to see that. So what I would encourage you to do is get your internal staff involved in sharing, commenting, and liking your posts. Okay, so they all have personal Facebook accounts. Uh, when you post a company status update, have them log in and like, comment, share these posts. It's going to get in front of their personal network, and it's going to help increase the reach uh, that your company post has. I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't want my recruiters 
you know, having anything personal related to the company and all that other good stuff. Um, well, if, if that's your mindset, you're really limiting your reach. You're really limiting your potential. You wouldn't uh, say to your recruiter, you know what, you can't use the phone because I don't want you talking about sports or I don't want you, you know, sharing personal beliefs or things like that. It's kind of what you're doing if you're limiting people's social uh, engagement. Now, you have to balance that, obviously, um, but, but kind of think about it that way. I think the pros um, greatly outweigh the, uh, the negatives. Um, how else can you figure out if your efforts are working? Well, I mentioned Google Analytics or some other online tracking program. You need to look at uh, how your social presence is impacting overall uh, referrals. So Google Analytics in particular lets you see um, and compare your traffic from specific uh, referral sites like Facebook, like LinkedIn, like Google+, um, year over year, month over month, week over week. Uh, so to find this data, you're just going to log into Analytics. You're going to go to Acquisition. Um, under Acquisition, there's a Social tab, and then there's an Overview tab. So you can see specifically how your increase in activities on social outlets is impacting web traffic. I mentioned this earlier, our goal of, of social media isn't, get to, isn't to get people to hang out on Facebook and hang out on our Facebook page. We want them to take action. We want them to click on something, come back to our website, fill out an application, fill out a, a request an employee form. So in terms of effectiveness, we want to look at our own personal web analytics to determine if we are getting that traffic from Facebook back to our site. Uh, if we are, great. Look at what posts are driving the most traffic. If we're not, uh, think about w what we're posting. Um, are we just posting a funny picture on Facebook, or are we posting something that drives traffic back to our site? So think about all those things. Um, he here's a mini case study that I wanted to share because I just think it shows the um, the, the true ROI of, of social media. Um, so we had a, a, a company that had a challenge with, with organic visitors. So they weren't getting local candidates to their site. So what we did is, is upgraded um, their SEO posts. Uh, we created something called Google Local Pages. So, so far we've talked about Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Don't forget about Google Local um, and Google Plus. Uh, there's, there's some value in being active there. And then uh, we also, through a combination of um, Haley marketing efforts and, and the internal uh, staffing resources there, we spent about two hours a day on Facebook. Um, and it sounds like a lot, but it's really you know five or six people that are spending um, 15, 20 minutes on Facebook a day. So it's, it doesn't have to be that much. Uh, the results were pretty out, uh, outstanding. We saw, a, in a very short amount of time, a 56% increase in site visitors. Uh, so we were getting in front of more people, more people were coming back to the site. A 62% increase in direct traffic to the site. Okay, so if you, did, if you didn't uh, look at all these statistics as a whole, um, you, you, you wouldn't really get the true impact. 62% um, of people were um, seeing Facebook posts and then maybe a day later going back to the website. Okay, we are increasing awareness, increasing reach, increasing brand recognition. We had a 15% increase in the number of keywords used to find their site. So it went from um, people that maybe didn't know about the company to people that were searching for staffing services in a specific market that found them. Um, by doing this um, over a year time, Facebook became a huge referral source for this company. Um, and they tried to measure this internally as best they could. Um, and they could equate 23 jobs um, throughout half of 2013 that were filled by Facebook alone. So these were people that uh, came directly from Facebook that were a direct result, 23 orders that were a direct result of placement through Facebook. So it can be very powerful. All right. Um, one other thing that we want to look at uh, in analytics is uh, a spike in referral traffic. Um, so what is referral traffic? Referral traffic is other websites out there that are, are driving traffic to uh, your site. In Google Analytics, uh, you're, you're, you're going to want to try, try to figure out, um, one, what you shared specifically. Um, you're going to look at where you shared it and how did I present it. So um, in Analytics, uh, you can look at individual pieces of content, individual pages in your site, and you can see how people are, are engaging with that content. 
use that data again to highlight the what, what I like to call the outliers. Um, you can see here in October we had one post that had a ton of referral traffic. We need to go in analytics and see what that post was. Well, then once we know what that post was, we need to um, take a look at Facebook Insights, Twitter Insights, and, and LinkedIn Insights to see um, what, what platform had the most engagement. So I want you to go in, look at this data, highlight the outliers here, and then figure out what that content was, and write and share more of that same content. Again, just a, uh, a sample of the information that you can look at here. Um, so you can see what content was shared, uh, see what content was consumed the most, and then again, adjust your strategy going forward. The other thing that I did want to point out, um, we're not only looking at increasing overall traffic to our site, but we want to increase um, conversions on our site. So it's not enough just to get somebody to your site. We want to get the right person to your site, and we want them to take action. What's really powerful about social media is that we found that the people that come from social media oftentimes have some of the highest conversion rates, meaning they're people that are coming to the site and clicking on the Contact Us page. They're people that are coming to the site and going to our job board or filling out an application. Uh, so we have a higher conversion rate from social media visitors than a lot of other sources. So social can be powerful. And you want to make sure that you um, have an active presence there and you're getting those uh, people to your site and that they're converting. All this data is data that you can find in Google Analytics. All right, another metric we're going to look at to see if my efforts are working is, is my audience increasing? So um, overall, are you getting more followers? Are you getting more likes? We mentioned it, I think, twice already in the presentation. We want to see a consistent growth pattern. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting likes from the right people geographically. Um, so if, if you do most of your business in Chicago, it means nothing to me if people in New York City are following me. They're not my target audience. So uh, look at your audience increase and make sure you're getting it from the right people. I had... Um, one staffing company told me, oh yeah, I had this great company that uh, did work for me on Facebook. They built my Facebook likes from, from about 100 to 3,000 in three weeks. And if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Uh, they did it by um, having thousands of bogus accounts in India follow their, their company page. Uh, that adds no value to you. So again, you want to make sure that you're getting uh, audience increases from the right people. You want to look at uh, growth over time and use your charts within Facebook Insights to make sure that you are getting this nice, consistent growth pattern. Uh, if you find that you're having trouble getting uh, organic likes, uh, look at paid ads. It's a great way you can do a, very easily do a paid like campaign in Facebook to drive a lot of traffic. Um, you want to continually test. Social media gives you a great platform to test messages. Uh, if you're looking at launching a new direct mail campaign or looking at a new positioning message for your company, test it out on social media first. Uh, see what people engage with. See what their feeling is. It's a great platform. I always suggest A-B testing. So change one or two elements at a time. Don't change more than that so that you can really hone in and figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, test out the different types of posts you make. Um, use open versus closed questions, test times, etc. And I'll go through a few examples of, of what we've done with other staffing firms, and, and you can implement some of these in your own market. Um, here's, a, here's a sample of an A and B test. And in one case, we used the term um, as a headline, uh, job opening in the term. In another case, we, we used the words, we're hiring. And the engagement uh, the impressions, the reach was way more when we use the term we're hiring as opposed to job opening. So do similar tests in your market and see what verbiage works. Um, open versus close-ended questions. Uh, we, we found that close-ended questions get way more response and way more engagement. Uh, people don't have to think as much. They can just put, put an answer there. So um, test some of these things out, out for your company. Um, Look at research that others have done out there. Um, look at other industries. The retail industry um, specifically does a ton of A-B testing. There's a lot that you can learn from retail. Um, in this case, uh, 
a noted social scientist, Dan uh, Zarella, did some uh, analysis. And what, what he found is, um, number one, uh, this is basically research on Twitter, uh, but what he found is frequency of posts. Uh, don't post more than once an hour. Uh, your uh, engagement drops way more than that. Use action words, so use verbs and fewer nouns. Uh, he found that posting later in the day actually had bigger reach. Uh, so posting around uh, 2 p.m. and later uh, garnered a lot more reach and a lot more engagement. And don't be afraid to post things on the weekends either, especially for your candidates. Oftentimes they're active on social media on the weekends. So um, I know typically we're afraid to you know, send out communications or, or post things over the weekends. In today's mobile age, people are connected on the weekend. People are connected at night. So test it out. We talked a lot about uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of other networks out there. Uh, what I want to make sure you don't do is neglect these networks. So keep an eye on uh, especially social review sites. In the social age, people are more and more apt to speak their mind on social outlets. If you go to Yelp and look up staffing services in your market, you'll probably find a whole lot of people that are complaining. Uh, hopefully they're not complaining about you. Hopefully they're complaining about a competitor. But um, if they are saying something about you, you need to address it. Uh, you need to know about it. And you need a plan of action uh, to make sure that this doesn't negatively impact you. So look at Yelp. Look at Google. Look at Yahoo reviews. Uh, make sure that you don't have negative information out there. Um, if you do, address it. Um, show that you're looking for ways to improve your service. Uh, but more importantly, Get the people that are proponents of your service to go in and leave positive reviews for you. So when you place a candidate uh, that's really happy, ask them to leave a Google review for you. Ask them to go on to Yelp and say, hey, XYZ staffing is awesome. They found me a great job and they did X, Y, and Z for me. Um, so encourage uh, your best clients, encourage your best candidates to go out there and leave social reviews. Uh, more and more people are turning to social reviews as a term uh, to determine whether or not they want to work work with uh, your company. As is noted on this slide here, 72% uh, of consumers trust online reviews as much as they do if they ask one of their friends. Very, very powerful. The other nice thing here is um, Google uses reviews and uses your engagement on social sites to determine if you should rank ahead of another company in search rankings. So just by getting more reviews can increase the likelihood that you're going to show up earlier in search results when somebody types in staffing agencies in your city. So it's very, very powerful. I get this all the time. When I ask people why they're not more active on social media, they say, oh my goodness, well, I just don't have time. Well, um, you need to make time. And, and social can actually make your job way easier. So... Um, it doesn't always have it doesn't have to be the owner. It doesn't have to be one person that takes on the social responsibilities. You can spread this across your team. Uh, you can look for ways to build efficiency. So one thing that we often do is create what we call long form, form content. So maybe we have an ebook or a white paper or a salary guide, a more substantial piece that we've put together. Take little snippets out of that and use those as your social posts. Drive that traffic back to a landing page where they can um, request the, the full guide or full um, uh, white paper. Long form content makes great short form social media posts. And then um, last but not least, make a part of your re routine. So if you can get in the habit each day before you even check email um, to go on and spend 5, 10, 15 minutes on social outlets, go to LinkedIn, see who's posting questions, um, see what group conversations are going on, share a piece of content. Go to Facebook, share a piece of content. Go to Twitter and see if anybody mentioned you or your company. See if there's any questions out there about hiring. Um, see if there's any people that have po any companies that have posted jobs on Twitter. That's one thing we didn't even mention. Uh, companies are out there posting open jobs on Twitter. It can be a great lead generation source. You can pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, I've got three people that would be a great fit for this position. Can I send you over their profiles? So um, again, social, when people say they don't have time, uh, I like to respond, well, you, 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 you have to make time. Um, you, you, it, it doesn't make any business sense to ignore social. You just need to make time. You need to make it part of your routine. Um, if, you, if you truly don't have time, 
um, or if you don't have enough time to devote to building organic reach, uh, look to paid. Um, there's a company out there called Social Bakers, and, and they're a social um, company, and they track a ton of statistics. Uh, and they reported that 77% of all page reach was achieve, achieved through promoted posts on Facebook. So even if you don't have time to build that organic reach, um, use ads, use paid reach to get in front of more and more people. Uh, it works. Uh, here's a, a quick case study here on an IT recruiting firm in California. Uh, IT uh, in, in California recruiting is, is tough. Uh, most of the best people are already working. They're already placed. Uh, so how do, you reach, how do you reach people? How do you stay top of mind with active and passive job seekers? Um, how do you highlight IT jobs and get those in front of people that may already be working um, but maybe you know, may consider a, a new opportunity? Uh, so we use paid reach to do this. Uh, we, the, what we did is, is exported 13,000 people from uh, this company's ATS system. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, we uploaded it into Facebook's ad platform. We were able to reach almost 4,000 of these people consistently, and we were able to get 87 actions. Uh, so that's 87 really highly qualified candidates that they couldn't get in front of before that took action that uh, clicked on this ad, submitted applications, and it cost them 200 bucks. Uh, very powerful, a very good way to reach uh, that high skill, high demand talent. Mentioned long form content. If you do any type of white papers, guides, uh, uh, anything else, I encourage you to consider using social media as a way to get this in front of people and get more people to download it. If you do do that, if you do, um, use ads. Take people to a landing page that captures their name and their email address and possibly phone number. If you can do that, you build, it's, it's a great lead generation source. It's a great way to increase the likelihood that somebody's going to request information from you. And we're running out of time, so last slide here. Uh, there are some ways to streamline your social media efforts. If you truly don't have time, um, look for ways to be more strategic about it. Here are three tools that, that we use internally. Um, number one, Buffer. Great, really, really simple, really easy interface. Hootsuite, Twitter feed. Um, there are dozens of them out there, uh, but these are just three in particular that, that I like. Uh, it allows you to schedule posts. Um, it gives you the ability to streamline uh, how you post content. Uh, so, so use these tools, look at ways to build in efficiencies so that you do have time. And that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Um, hopefully this was valuable for you. Again, social is a science. It's about looking at data. It's looking at analytics. It's looking at analysis to make better decisions both on and offline uh, with your marketing budget. Uh, so with that said, I, I know we started a little late and ran a little late, but I wanted to um, still leave time for questions. So if anybody has a question, please do submit those, and uh, we'll stay on the line here to answer them. Great. Thanks so much for all of that information. There was a ton of information that can really get people started to, to use social more effectively for themselves, for their business. So I appreciate you taking the time to cover so many different aspects for everyone today. Sure thing. Uh, now, I so know Amanda, that. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Amanda, um, do you know if there's any questions that have come in, or uh, is that something that I'm going to be able to, to see on my end here? You'll be able to see that now on your end. Um, you may have to return um, to the other screen so you can see the, the okay. panel. Now, I know we sometimes um, get the question, should, should companies be using a Google Plus page? What do you think of that? Yeah, we, we get that question all the time. So should you be using a Google Plus page? Yes. Um, but maybe not for the reason that you think. Um, a lot of people think that they should be using a Google Plus page because of the social aspect. Um, unfortunately, I... I don't think that Google Plus really has the uh, user uh, base or engagement yet. Um, so instead of uh, using it strictly for its social benefit, I suggest using it for its search engine benefit. And what I mean by that is uh, Google and the other social media outlets are looking at social cues. 
So they're looking at how people um, follow you. They're looking at how often you post content. And they're using that as a determining factor on whether or not you should rank ahead of another staffing firm in your market in search results. So companies that have a strong Google Plus presence uh, increase their social relevance factor and in turn increase the likelihood that they show up in search results. So I think it's very beneficial to have that Google uh, Plus page and be active on it. Okay, great. Just for the search engine optimization features. Yep. Okay. Yep. What do you re um, recommend as far as how frequent posting should occur? Um, great question. So how often should you post? And I think a lot of it depends on your audience. Um, we talked a little bit about you know, A-B testing and things like that. I, I would strongly encourage you to test out a different frequency. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, uh, what I would do is try to post to LinkedIn and Facebook um, three to four times a day to start, or a day, a week um, to, to start off with. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be three to four times a day. Uh, but three to four times a week, I think, is a, is a good goal to shoot for. Um, and then from there, look at statistics, look at analytics. On Twitter, uh, you can post several times a day. Um, you know, but I get that not everybody has time to do that. Um, so use tools like, like Buffer, use tools like um, Hootsuite to help uh, maybe take an hour a week and cue in all of those different tweets throughout the week that, that you want to go out. Um, so look at tools to help simplify things and uh, shoot for two to three on Facebook and LinkedIn and um, maybe one or two a day on Twitter. Yeah, and the Hootsuite or those types of services, that's a great suggestion because then it can also post to multiple platforms. Is that correct? You've got it. Yeah, so dead on. So work smarter, not harder. Um, and what I mean by that, you can generate some great content. You can use these tools to help automate it to an extent. Uh, but again, social is about personal communication, so you have to take that into account too. Uh, but you can post to several outlets with one click. So use the tools. Yeah, that's a fantastic feature, and that way you're not having to, to do the work twice in one sense. Um, you got it. Great. And then um, could you tell me a little bit about your experience using ads on social media sites? Is, is that real beneficial? Is it worth the cost? Yeah, you know, again, I think it depends on your audience. Uh, so if if you have specifically jobs that are really hard to fill. And I've run into this in IT. I've run into this in engineering. I've even run into this in skilled trades like you know CNC machinists or welders. I think social can be a great way to get your message, your jobs, your name in front of passive candidates. Uh, so for example, if I'm looking for CNC machinists in St. Louis, uh, I can go to Facebook and I can see um, how many people within 50 miles of St. Louis uh, have said in their profile somewhere that they're a CNC machinist, uh, they're a metal worker, they're a machine operator, and I can run targeted ads just to those people. Uh, it's low cost, and it's a way for me to get in front of the exact target audience I reach, uh, I want to reach, um, without wasting marketing dollars. So I think it can be extremely, extremely effective if done the right way. Sure. Okay, great. Would you mind just checking if you could um, click on the little button at the top? You might be able to click on in the Q and A. Um, yep. Next. I actually. Oh, I you think might be I able found. To yeah, I think I found one question so far. Um, what are the financial costs associated with business pages on social media sites? Um, and the great thing here is that uh, on, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, there's zero hard dollars that you need to spend to have a business page on these sites. Um, there are advanced features like advertising. Um, there's highlight pages on LinkedIn, and there's some advanced things that you can do that you can pay for uh, to have a stronger presence. But uh, in terms of just having these these pages, having a Facebook page, LinkedIn page, or Twitter page, there's zero hard cost. Uh, and I emphasize emphasize hard cost because there is a soft cost in the time that you need to spend. Um, so you're going to need some internal resources. Uh, 
um, or some outside help to manage these pages. So just take that into consideration when looking at overall cost. You want to make sure that you have a good strong presence and you're updating content there. Uh, in, in many cases, if you have an outdated social presence or uh, maybe your Facebook page only has 10 likes, um, sometimes that can harm your reputation more than not having a page at all. Uh, so just take that into consideration. Uh, but again, you know, don't let that scare you away either. I think socials, the pros far outweigh the cons. So set up pages, begin building your following. Great. And you think consistency is just as important as, as the frequency. If you're not able to commit to three times a week, just being consistent with getting a message out there to your audience is, is probably a good place to start. Yeah, I completely agree. You you you, you want to be consistent. You want to make sure that um, you know if if you consistently post two times a week, do it. Uh, make sure that it happens. Use tools to help make sure that it happens. And you don't always have to share um, unique content. So it's not like you have to come up with a white paper or an ebook every single week. Um, you can look at you know if there's a great article that you read, share it. But instead of just sharing a link to that article, share why it's a great article. Share what your user base is going to get out of it. So you don't always have to generate the content, um, but um, you know, make sure that you at least put your spin on it uh, so that it, uh, it, it comes from you. Great. Well, valuable information. I really appreciate your time today in sharing this with our audience. And if there were no other questions, um, we can wrap things up. I know we went a little bit late today. Um, thank you again for all of your patience and your participation in today's webinar, and certainly, Brad, for sharing your knowledge on social media. Um, we will be posting a recording on our website at trackcom.com. It will be under our Resources tab at Industry Insider Webinars. If you have any questions, I mean, you should see Brad's uh, contact information. I'm sure he'd be more than willing to um, speak with anyone one-on-one -on -one to answer any questions. Um, or you can definitely um, contact me, I'm Amanda at Tricom. Thank you again for your participation and watch for information on our next webinar session, which will be held on Thursday, July 24th. And we have our guest speaker, Josh, from Equifax, presenting a holistic approach to unemployment cost management. So with that, I hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.